welcome to the Northwoods. This is a site we've selected for the log cabin. As you can see, the foundation's in, everything's backfilled. We have a cap on, the front and back porches are in. We had to have all this done before the logs arrive. They're just po polishing off the field stone right now. The intention is, once everything's done, we want it to look as though the cabin is sitting on top of a full field stone foundation. Well, since we didn't have the time or the skills to work the logs ourselves, we're working with a log home manufacturer. They helped us out with the plan, and they built the log shell at their yard. In fact, delivery is scheduled for tomorrow. So even though we're not quite done with the field stone work, we're pretty much ready to go. They'll take care of just about everything that relates to the logs, which is great, because it will take them about two to three days to put up the log home, as compared to two to three weeks if we were framing the home using dimensional lumber. We're acting as our own general contractors here, which means that after we bought the property, we took care of the permits, the phone, the power, the well, and the septic system. Now once the logs are assembled, we'll be doing the roof, the windows and doors, and all the interior work. I'm sure those two are for the front porch. Right, yeah. Well, things are really starting to hop this morning. We have our first load of logs, and the assembly crew is starting to unload some of the logs now. They'll be using this boom truck to transport the logs from the truck over to the top of our camp. Well, some of the logs are over 50 feet long, so needless to say, the boom truck is a great help. In fact, sometimes the biggest problem is just getting it on site. You need a big driveway with a lot of clearance. And the same goes for the log trailers. The logs were notched and fitted at the log homemaker's facility, and they were tagged and loaded onto trucks for their trip out here. Now, their arrival has been timed, so the first truck that gets out here also has the first logs we need, which are the sill logs. The sill logs are the bottom logs in each wall, and they're cut flat underneath to rest securely on the platform. They're set over a layer of sill sealer material to prevent air leakage where they meet the platform. And the crossing sill logs are half-notched to hide the unattractive ends of the first ones. Well, all the sill logs are in place, so now the crew is just checking for square. We're taking a tape measurement from one corner all the way to the other, and if the diagonals are the same on this end and on these ends, then they're fine. Otherwise, we'll have to adjust the logs as needed. They did the same thing at this point during the initial assembly at the builder's log yard in Twin Lakes, Michigan. So squaring them here puts them in the same position they were in then, which is necessary for setting the rest of the logs properly. Once the corners are square, the crew drives in 12-inch spikes to secure them to the platform. Once all the sill logs are secured, they continue putting up the rest of the logs. Now they'll begin with a set that runs parallel like so, and then they'll work with a set that crosses over the top of those. As the full logs go in, you get a better idea of how they've notched the corner joints. They cut the bottom of the upper log to fit over the lower log, which isn't cut at all. They do lay a piece of R11 insulation at each joint as a weather barrier. And the notches can be fine-tuned so they're virtually airtight. Corner notching is the real key to building a log home. It binds the logs together and it helps determine the overall look of the home. This is called a saddle notch, and that's a shrink to fit notch. What that means is that as the logs dry, they shrink ever so slightly, and that forms an even tighter seam along here. So there's no need to nail the corners together. There are a lot of corners in our design, which combines a main living area 34 by 36 feet with a one-story master bedroom on the side, which is 16 feet square. Adding the bedroom there doubled the corners that had to be notched from four to eight. And that adds to construction time and cost, but it gives us an interesting floor plan. Well, about to do it there? Yep. During assembly at the log yard, they notch the logs so the walls are perfectly plumb and square. And they nail in these staples like so on the top and bottom of every notch. Once they're out here at the site, they just align the logs back to these staples, and it keeps everything perfectly plumb and square. The logs are red pine, and their butts average 11 to 14 inches in diameter. And the butts are wider than the tips. 
so they alternate them as they move up to balance the walls. And to enhance the handcrafted look, the log ends run past the notches at random lengths. Other builders cut them to uniform length, but that produces really a less rustic feeling. Variations in the logs will leave gaps like this. Well, actually, that's to be expected. Now, later on, we'll fill in those gaps with some weatherproof chinking material. Now, you can cut logs to fit snug without any chinking material in the Scandinavian scribe style, but that costs more money and it takes a little bit longer, too. At the log yard, they provide gaps like this for access inside, but they don't cut out any of the window or door openings. This prevents shifting of the logs at that point. We'll cut out the window and door openings once we get the roof on, but they do reinforce the pre-planned openings with steel rebar. The rebar goes into holes drilled at the log yard. It'll hold the log ends firm once the openings are cut. Well, that gives you some idea on how the logs are assembled, but let's take it one step further. Dean recently had a chance to visit the Maple Island Log Yard while they were working on our log home. And he got a pretty good idea of the skill and efficiency that it takes to pull together a project that's this big. This is where the whole process begins near Muskegon, Michigan. They cut, notch, and assemble all the logs for every home they make. Now they actually build the home here on location, disassemble it, and then ship it to its final destination. Now the crews may be working on as many as seven homes at one point in time. They may have four or five homes finished and ready for shipment. So it starts looking a little bit like an old frontier outpost. The logs themselves come from the forests of Michigan, but before they can be used to construction, they have to spend up to 10 months drying out in these racks. Green logs tend to shrink when they dry, which is bad for the log joints, so it's best if they spend a little bit of time drying out over there. Then they're also organized and stacked according to length and width. They'll range up to 60 feet long and 26 inches wide, but most logs going into homes will be between 20 and 30 feet long and between 11 and 14 inches wide. Once the logs are dried, they're stripped of their bark using draw knives, which happens to be the same tool used by the pioneers. They handcraft the logs like this to maintain the original shape of the log, with a larger butt end and a thinner tip end. It gives the log home more of an authentic appearance, as opposed to the uniform look you get when all the logs are milled to the same diameter. Once the logs are peeled, Crews working on different projects select the logs they need for their plan and haul them over to the site. As you see the crews working in the yard, you'll notice that they're building the roofs on the ground. And they do this for a couple of reasons. One, it's easier to work on the ground than it is up high, and it's also a little bit safer this way. Now, of all the shells you see on the grounds, there's one we have a particular interest in. Let's take a look at it. This is a home they're building for us. As you can see, they're just finishing up the first floor and they're putting the finishing touches on the roof. Right, this is Mark Bingham. Mark's been supervising construction of the house. Say, hey, mind if I interrupt you in a second one? No, not at all. I wanted to ask you one quick question. Has this roof line been a real problem for you? Uh, well, as you can see uh, by looking at it, Dean, it, uh, it has a combination of styles there. One, of course, is the Perlin style that goes over the main part of the house, and then we we'll switch to the uh, a Raptor style uh, out over the bedroom. And it uh, makes for a, an interesting architectural combination. I think that uh, the architect staff did a good job of making it flow together, and of course the guys with their handcrafting have uh, made it happen. So by the time we get this thing to Wisconsin, do you think that's going to be a real bear cat to finish framing the roof? Well, uh, it's obviously going to tax uh, your abilities a little bit, uh, Dean, but the base is already set there, and uh, you'll find that, uh, that it'll flow through pretty, pretty good. Okay, you'll give us a few pointers, won't you? Oh, absolutely. We're with you clear to the end. We're going to need them. I'm going to check out something here on the inside. I'll be right back. I just wanted to give you a closer look at the notching that goes into these log buildings. Now, on first glance, this may look like a hodgepodge of rough timbers, but there's a real art to doing this. Just look at how tightly these joints fit. Now, the notching's all done on our house, but they're working on some of the other buildings. Let's go over there to see how it's done. All right, looks like JB's all set to notch the next one here. Now, he scribed the back of this already. Using a special scribing tool, he's transferring the shape of this log to the bottom of this log right here. The scriber is set at about half the diameter of the log to keep all the overlaps even. And it's equipped with bubbles to show level end plumb, which are crucial in getting an accurate scribe. 
And I also make some mark on the bottom log to help line up the top log later. With all the notches scribed, JB and his partner Leon turn the log over on its back to actually cut the notches. And they shim the log to keep it from moving during the cutting. They start the notches with chainsaws, cutting grooves between the scribe marks. This log is being notched in three places to accommodate the two end walls and an interior wall. After the grooves are all cut, the waste wood can be knocked out with a hammer. That leaves a rough notch, which then has to be fine-tuned. At this yard, they use an electric chipping gun with a special gouge chisel bit to smooth out the rough spots and cut a fine line along the scribe. Now that's what creates the tight seam with the log below. When all the notches are done, it's kind of the moment of truth as far as a fit goes. Nice. Well, we're going to give it just a little final nudge here. So what happens if it doesn't fit quite right? Well, there's just a couple things that we can do here if it's not fitting quite right. We can uh, roll the thing back out and see if we got anything hitting inside the scribe and take just a hair more off. Or we can check to see if there's any knots that we have to buzz through back here to uh, let the log come down just another quarter, half inch. Okay, but not this time. Not this time, it's there. Okay, well thanks JB, nice work. All right, there's just a couple of final steps we want to look at in the process of building a long hole. So let's do that now. When the home's completely done, they give it a power wash. They spray on a cleaning solution to remove dust and dirt that collected during the construction process. It's like a high pressure shower for the log. Then when a log home is clean and ready to go, they label all the logs and load them onto the trailers. They go on the trailer in reverse order of construction. That puts the bottom logs at the top of the load, which is where they're needed when the home is reassembled. Well, that's as far as the building process goes here at the log yard. The rest of the construction takes place at the final destination. That was two weeks ago in Michigan. And it gives you a good sense of how the logs are prepared before delivery. Well, now we're back at our cabin site, and they're putting down more logs on our foundation. And that's where we'll pick it up again. trailer had the initial one-third of the logs needed to build our home and the crew continued working until dusk to finish it since the next trailer would be arriving first thing in the morning. As general contractors there's not a whole lot we can do to help out the assembly crew but there are a few things to do around the site and that's what we're working on now. Like the field stone that's mortared in around the foundation? We've collected all that from the property around here and now stockpiling more for the fireplace. All this debris? Well, they had to clear a lot of trees to bring in the road and prep the building site. So I'm just now in the process cleaning up some of that now. I sure put in a long day yesterday, didn't they? Uh, the second truck ought to be here any minute now, I would think. Well, they're just about to the top of the first floor. As they reach that point, you'll notice that the wall logs start taking on new rolls. Well, for instance, this one log sticking out here, which eventually will be supported by a post over in this area, will help support the roof as that comes out the back here as will a tie log running up the center of the building and another log that will come out on that side of the building. Tie logs are used in log building to literally tie opposing walls together and they're notched to fit over those walls. They run through the log home's interior, so they're frequently left exposed to enhance the overall appearance. This one carries from the front entryway to the back porch, so it's actually the longest log in our home. So the uh, boom is at its capacity, huh? It's about maxed out, as they say. Yeah. Well, we're well into the second log truck, and things seem to be going pretty well. This is Dick Tuxbury, and he's overseeing the reconstruction of our log home here. 
Is uh, everything going on schedule? Everything's going fairly well. The only thing that may be holding us up a little bit are the trees that are on the other side of the house. Uh, the boom is having a hard time swinging around with the logs. Well, all the same, though, things are going up really quickly. They are going up quickly. Um, if we try to build this on site, uh, we may be here for 10 or 12 weeks. But the fact that uh, we pre-built this in our log yard in Michigan, we can do things very quickly there. Yeah. So all your homework makes our life easier. Right. All the fitting and notching was done there. It was all tried and true. Yeah. So it worked well. So they're working on the joist now, is that right? They're putting down a layer of joist right now, I believe. Should we go look? Yeah. All right. Take a look. In log buildings, logs can also be used to support floors. And our plan calls for log joists under the second floor. They're saddle notched below to fit snugly and cut flat on the top for flooring. But the ends have been left round, since they'll be visible even after the cabin is finished. These log joists are pretty hefty to say the least. So the spacing between them is a little bit wider than you'd find in conventional framing. And that gives us some leeway in our layout, too. Well, for instance, the spacing between some of these joists varies ever so slightly. And that's because we needed two of these joists to fall directly above some 2 by 4 walls that we'll be framing later on. Cutting logs is sometimes necessary to remove bad lengths or to cover long distances. The ends are secured with metal strapping, and the splice only goes where it can later be hidden by a notch. Once all the joists are laid across the logs that support them, the cap logs can be set in place over the joists. They're notched on the bottom to literally cap off the joists and secure them in the structure. They're also the first logs on the second floor walls, which now begin to rise as the assembly progresses. This is a wall that separates the master bedroom from the rest of the first floor. Now, on either side here, they've created what's called a blind notch. During the manufacturing process, they cut off the logs back here a little short. You notice they don't crisscross like most of the notches in the house do. Then they notch out the backs of these logs, slide them over those logs, and it makes it a lot easier to frame out the doorway. Now, just because these logs are cut off a little bit for the doorway, it kind of leaves them a little bit freestanding. But that isn't a problem because they've reinforced everything with metal rebar. With a tie log and cap log in place over the back porch, crew members cut log posts to support the ends of the logs. Log buildings often require posts to bear the weight of the logs, and you need footings below to strengthen the posts. They bring extra logs for this kind of posting, and they'll do the installation if your footings are ready. If not, you'll have to cut the logs to jump later on. With the vertical supports in place, they set in the first log purlin. Purlins are unique to log home construction. Now, typically, they span from gable end to gable end horizontally, helping to support the roof and the dormers. Their ends are tied into the gable end logs, so the structure gets pretty complex, especially because of all the different features we're planning for our roof. In fact, it ought to be pretty interesting to see how they handle the dormers. They're also moving along in the entryway. These massive 20-inch logs will be used as posts to support the logs here that will form the roof of the entryway. Because of the weight of the logs, they're using the boom truck to help position them. Now, you don't want rain pooling on the post upper ends, so they angle cut the tops with chainsaws to drain the water off. And on the bottom, they're set on a piece of treated plywood, which will later be removed as the logs settle. As evening approached, the crew kept right on moving the logs onto the cabin. But as Dick had predicted, they were falling behind schedule. The crew had hoped to finish up with the second log trailer yesterday, but they ran out of daylight. They're just finishing up those last logs now. The purlins and posts are in position over the front entryway, and here they're building up the gable ends and the roof for the master bedroom. are typically spiked together for vertical strength, which makes it possible to swing two or three into position at once. These two take the cabin wall up to the same height as the master bedroom's outside wall. That's where the ridge log comes in for the master bedroom roof. It's spiked into position over the house wall. 
and a saddle is secured over the outside end to match the angle of the bedroom rafters, which can now be installed. Over the house, log trailers will supply the main support for the roof, but here in the master bedroom, we'll be using log rafters rather than the horizontal purlins. Now these work basically the same as dimensional rafters, except of course due to their size and consequently their strength, we're able to space them a little bit further apart. These will be 32 inches on center. The rafters are notched for the walls and for the ridge lock. They're plumb cut on top to form peaks with the rafters coming up from the other side. And they're plain flat on one side to create an even surface for securing the roofing material. After the rafters are all in, short logs are wedged between them to fill the open spaces where they cross the wall logs. And that finishes the second log trailer so they can move the final load into position. The truck's arrivals were scheduled for the first, second, and third mornings of the assembly. Delays and reconstruction forced the third truck to wait several hours for the second one to be unloaded, and that adds to the cost of delivery. As the third truck is prepared for unloading, they're now enlarged in the main door openings on the first floor. This will make it easier to move in and out as the construction proceeds, and it's a preview of the cutting we'll be doing later on the other doors and on the windows. A log stairway was included in our package. They cut and assembled it in Michigan and packed it on top of the third load, so it's the first thing to come off. They're setting it inside for now since the supports for it aren't quite ready yet. now for the next round of purlins. Now you can build gable ends with regular and dimensional lumber. But one of the reasons we went with this builder is because of their use of logs on the end. The logs going in now are notched and angle cut to serve several functions. The notched ends will help form the dormers and the angled ends will support the roofing material. So they're cut to match the 912 pitch of our main roof. And there's a wall rising out of the second floor as the assembly continues. The ends of its logs are also framing the roof and dormers. The next log caps off the master bedroom ridge log and raises that gable end up to where two more purlins come in. The purlins extend from gable end to gable end and maneuvering them through the trees does take a while. They're notched to lock in securely with the wall logs. A second purlin follows the first one. It goes in on the opposite side of the roof. Now the purlins will directly support the finished roof, so they're angle cut on the edge to match the 912 pitch. When that's in place, they continue up with the next set of gable end logs, which are spiked together for quick reassembly. Now we want to show you a couple things inside. Even as massive as this tie log is, we still have to support it with a couple of steel posts. Now these don't exactly match the rest of the wood posts, but that's all right because later on these will be hidden inside an interior partition wall. Uh, floor joists up here are supported by these three wood posts. The one back here is permanent, but these two right here are temporary. They'll come out as soon as we install the stairway, and that goes up once our landing up here is installed. Now this area right here will remain open. We'll have clear story windows up on the roof. This area up here will become a loft, and this wall right here will separate this part of the house from the back here, which will become three bedrooms. Up here, they've cut out an access area into the bedrooms. Later on, they'll make this a little bit larger. It'll become the opening for the hallway. One thing that's kind of interesting is they've taken a chainsaw and routed out the log here. This way, we can take our subfloor and just slide it right into that routed opening. We won't have to scribe the subfloor to the form of the log. As the end of our third day approached, there were still quite a few logs left, and it became obvious that they wouldn't get finished on this day. Well, for a variety of reasons, 
crew's been losing about two hours a day, so it's going to take them about another half day to finish. But luckily, they will finish everything up today. Most of the problems have been related to site conditions. But again, all this adds to the cost of reconstruction. The dormers are starting to take shape on this side of the roof. The notched logs are in place, which form the dormer side walls. And they'll have the same types of corners as we have on the main walls. Now as they near the top of the cabin, the logs get a little shorter, so the boom and cable move a little more quickly through the trees. That means they can move pretty fast 